Our theme this year for our service is our hearts will always remember. This is the first time in many years when we've not been able to gather in person. But our thanks go to the NHS Lanarkshire Choir, Angela and Barry Tierney, Lee and Joyce, Shagan and Mia Komalafi, Kelly Forbes and Sandy Barton. We hope that you who are watching our service will find something that will allow you to connect with the service as we proceed. Hello, my name is Ali Pandian. I'm Harry's colleague. At the beginning of the pandemic, members of the public made crocheted or knitted or felt hearts for patients in hospital and their families to stay connected, even when they weren't able to see each other in person. We recognise the parallels with our parents and babies. After a baby sadly dies, the connection remains. We invited you to request being sent a pair of hearts to acknowledge that connection with your baby or babies. You might like to hold one during the service. Following the service, the invitation is to place one of these hearts somewhere you go to remember. It might be in your memory box or on a tree in your garden. Know that wherever you choose to put your heart, you're not alone in your remembering. You are invited to keep the other one somewhere you can always access, maybe in your bedside drawer or a purse or a wallet to symbolize the connection you will always have with your baby or babies. For those who do not have the hearts, you can still request them after the service by contacting our bereavement specialist midwife, Vicky Grove, at the email address that is appearing on the screen. We are connected, my child and I, by an invisible cord not seen by the eye. It's not like the cord that connects us at birth, this cord can't be seen by any on earth. This cord does its work right from the start. It binds us together, attached to my heart. I know that it's there, though no one can see the invisible cord from my child to me. The strength of this cord is hard to describe. It can't be destroyed. It can't be denied. It's stronger than any cord man could create. It withstands the test, can hold any weight. And though you are gone, though you're not here with me, the cord is still there, but no one can see. It pulls at my heart, I am bruised, I am sore. But this cord is my lifeline as never before. I'm thankful that my heart connects us this way. A mother and child, death can't take it away. The reading today is taken from the book of Psalm, Psalm 61, verses 1 to 3. O God, listen to my cry. Hear my prayer. From the ends of the earth I cry to you for help when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock of safety, for you are my safe refuge. Barry and Angela, thank you so much for agreeing to share a bit of your story with us today. You're here to tell us about how your heart 
remembers your son, Ollie. Can you tell us um, in whatever way you feel comfortable with about what happened to Ollie? So I was admitted to hospital at 23 and five um, with the intention of being delivered within 48 hours. We managed to get an extra three weeks and Ollie was delivered at 27 and five after careful consideration what was safe for me and what was safe to give baby the best chance. Um, and everything seemed to go quite well at that point, albeit it was very early. Um, we were prepared not to hear him not to cry in the theatre um, after delivery. Sure enough, all he cried and put everybody um, at a bit of a shock going, oh, what's that little sound? And it was him crying. Um, we briefly got to see him before he was taken to the neonatal unit. Um, where he was spent five days with a fantastic team who looked after him. Um, and then he just seemed to rewrite the rule book. We were prepared for the worst each day, and each day he excelled and proved the nurse and staff wrong. They said he'll do this. He didn't do that. He'd done something mm. completely different. Um, and then on day five, on the 21st of May 2019, <coughs> things took a bit of a turn. And we were still in the hospital at that time and we were called for to go and there was every parent's worst nightmare. We were told to prepare um, and when we went round it was the worst you could ever expect and sadly the event that happened that morning meant we left the hospital without Ollie. The, the morning of the 21st was um, quite hard quite hard um, because I had just seen him in the morning I'd, I'd nip down I'd nip down every morning to see him and I'd nip down to see him and he was you know hands were going everywhere and he was quite lively and the staff had said he'd been you know he'd been a good boy during the night and then came back to tell Angela listen you know our boy's doing brilliant um, he had a good night um, let's get some, some breakfast and let's go around and see him and then that's when we were told to to basically come to to NICU um, who were acquired uh, urgently um, to be informed that not long after I had left he took a he took a bad turn um, and then you know we were greeted with you know just chaos chaos um, people trying their hardest to, to desperately save this this little guy this little warrior this little guy that had fought five days um, and done everything that he shouldn't um, and then, you know, they, they couldn't do any more. So we were told to, we were told to, to hold them for the last sort of 30 seconds, just, just so he was with his mum and dad. Um, and then, you know, after that, that was, that was it. We sort of left, we left without our, our wee boy. But we did spend an extra few days in the hospital making memories with them. The neonatal staff were great. They helped That's us fantastic. do footprints, handprints, they let by the bathroom mm -hmm. and dress them. Um, and then we got to stay with them. And they arranged for remember my baby to come in and take pictures. So that we had family pictures with them. Um, so we had memories. Because naturally when you're pregnant, you plan out your, your pregnancy and your child's life right up until they're getting married and moving out of the house mm -hmm. and home and... Um, and naturally, we didn't get to do any of that, so we had to try and cram in as many memories as we could in the time that we had. Well, yeah. we stayed in a, a small private room in the neonatal ward. My memories of Ollie are he was remarkable, you know. And I know people, I know people will say that about all of you know their children and their kids, and um, but he was remarkable because I think fight, yeah. his fight he had for something is so small touched everybody, you know, because people in the profession know what the outcome is sometimes with this because that's what they do on a day-in-day -day basis. And then when they see this little guy going, actually, I know you sh you're telling me I shouldn't do this, but actually I'm going to go and do that. You know, I'm going to go and cry. I'm going to go and wave my hands. You know, one of the times in, in, in ICU I was in and the, the, the monitors, the hero, was was going off and there were people running towards um all, all his unit and and I'd say to him is everything okay and, and they went yes he goes unfortunately your son likes to pull the wires 
um, and likes to be very active um, rather than just being a baby that should be sitting there resting and trying to build up strength. He likes to pull the wires, so he pulls the heart rate monitor out, he pulls the feeding tube out. He, she said, and then that obviously triggers Hero. She said, so all he keeps us in our toes 24-7. Just liked attention to all the women. He did. He just, <laughs> he just liked, liked having them all on their toes. He just liked the attention. Um, so, you know, I am very, very proud um, of that little man. That little man just, no was not an option for him. Um, he's our hero. He's, he, is, he, is, he is our hero. No is not an option for him, you know, until there's, there's certain things that he cannot overcome, which was what happened to him on the 21st. Thank you so much, Angela and Barry, for sharing some of that with us. Um, in advance of this service, we sent out or asked people if they would like sent out a pair of hearts. Um, and we're inviting people to keep hold of one heart and take another of the hearts, the other heart, to the place where they go to remember or and keep it hold near to them um, at times when they remember. Is there anything that you particularly do or anywhere you particularly go to honour Ollie and his memory? So, again, one of those things that you're always planning your future when you're expecting. And we always said we wanted to travel and show the world. We wanted to let them experience everything that we'd experienced. So... My brother does travel, he still travels, and he set up an Instagram page, All the Bears Travels, whereby he shows all the world through his eyes. So everywhere he goes, he takes a picture and he puts a caption on, like, today All the Bear, we call them All the Bear, his mummy's little All the Bear. And even when he's 21, 41, 51, he'll always be my little All the Bear. So he posts on the Instagram page and we all now do it, we've all got access to it and as a family we all collectively post places we've been and we always take, we've got little stones that we take and they've got all his name on them and a blue heart and we leave one of them everywhere we go so he's been to New York, he's been to San Francisco, he's been to California, Lo California he's been to Loch Lomond, he's been to various different places um, and that's like him seeing the world through our eyes. So that's the thing that we do to remember him. And we take these little stones, especially the first place we went when we started doing this was to the place we got engaged because that's the place we went the day we found out I was pregnant. Um, and then like that, our wedding venues get one sitting in their gardens and just places that mean something to us and we would have shared with him. So we've not been able to go on holiday since. So <laughs> there's been no, none left in our special places abroad, but my brother, who has been able to travel up until lockdown, has certainly done that for us. Thank you. So, Barry and Angela, what might you say to other families that are watching this film when they feel that their hearts ache as they think of their little ones? There's no right or wrong way, and there's no, you should never feel guilty about feeling sad. Your heart's broken because of the amount of love you had and still will have for this little baby that will remain in your heart forever. Um, it might not be in your arms, but it'll certainly be in your heart. And talk about them. Don't ever think that you're making other people uncomfortable. Yeah. They're your baby. They deserve to be spoken about. And the, your story deserves to be shared. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with Angie. Um, there's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of hard days that, that continually come. Um, and when those hard days come, don't try and fight it. Um, just just go with it. Um, especially from a, a, a male point of view. Um, for myself, there was when we lost all. There was days where I just just wouldn't accept it and, and thought, you know what, you know, you can't really show emotion. You know, you just, you just can't cry. You know, you're meant to be the husband, the father, you know, the male. Um, so when that time comes and you become the emotion starts to, to rise, then, you know, let it go. Have a cry, have a bubble, sit and talk to your partner, have a cuddle, um, find that that find that find release. Um, and for me, uh, I found cycling was a, was a release for me because we had done a, we done a charity cycle in, in, in Memories Ollie. 
um, and I got, into, I got into cycling. So when it gets to that stage where I wake up and it's a hard day and, and you, can, you know when it's coming, you can feel when it's coming, um, I get myself ready, I jump on the bike and I just escape. I go and you know do whatever I need to do, go out for an hour, go out for two hours. Sometimes I don't even go far. Sometimes I just go down the road, I'll go to the, the Strathclyde Park and I'll sit on a bench for 20, 30 minutes, nobody knows me. I'm just a normal person sitting out in the park and then I come back and that release does help. That release makes you feel a bit better. Um, and, and if it does happen, just you know, let it go. Because at the end of the day, the, you know, don't they, hold it in. Yeah, they, they are they are forever maybe your babies. Don't hold it back. Just 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 let it go. Would you say? I would I, I totally agree. I think there's no rule book to how you cope with this. You yes. just muddle by as best you can. You take the support you can get. Don't ever think you're seen as being weak by taking any support that's offered. You're not. It's just something that's a stepping stone to help you cope with one of the most horrific things that will ever happen in any parent's life because it's not the natural order of how things should happen um so don't ever feel guilty about it and just always remember them It's up to easy to take
For those who find it helpful, let us pray to the God of your understanding. Lord God, you know well the pain that each of us have gone through to lead us to be participating in the service today. You know the heartache we have faced, the sadness that some days feels too much when our hearts are overwhelmed. Lead us to a place of safety. You know that there are times when we feel angry, when we ask questions of you, of why it all happened, of how on earth it could have been part of any plan. When our hearts are overwhelmed, lead us to a place of safety. Thank you for those who provide safety for each of us, for the midwives, nurses, and medical teams, who provided and still provide good care amidst awful times. Thank you for the love of family and friends, for the ones who have just the right words to say and the ones who know when silence is better than a thousand words. When our hearts are overwhelmed, lead us to a place of safety. As we journey forward with the love we feel for our little ones, always in our hearts, Help us to find ways to remember that will work for each of our own situations. Fill us with your peace that passes all understanding and always ensures that when our hearts are overwhelmed, you will lead us to a place of safety. Amen. Stephen Doherty. Katie Fleming. Baby Rooney. Lucy O'Hara. Sophie Louise Tarrant. Amy Burns. Joe Burns. Ali Smith. Billy Smith. Jamie Gardner. Freddie Dunbar. Callum John King. Samson. Ben Drummond. Ellie Milton. Sophia Purdy. Katie Donnelly. Erin Morrison. Baby Allison. Peyton Sky Doherty. Baby Anderson. Nova Cameron. Nell Rogers. Aaron Keeney. Lauren McGuinness. Baby Gabby. Olivia McAleer. Orla Elizabeth Martin. Duncan Williamson. Baby Young. Angela Kane, Grayson Donald Savage, Blair Alexander Nicol Adams, E. Chill, Michaela Rose Sloan Walker, Aria Downey, Margaret Elizabeth Bradley, Dominic. Kearney Shannon Ian Grove Angela McCollagan Crossweight Jacob Oliver Tweedley Baby Nielsen Baby Jacob Baby Sweeney Harry Barkley Oliver John Bertie Tierney River Davidson Baby Grant Colgan Tilly Brown Emar Rose Gill Baby Donnelly Brea Hawthorne Mark Derek Green Harper 
Bloomfield. Cara Bloomfield. Ailey Jean Patricia Brewer. Cameron Stephen McDonald Brewer. Finn John Jenkins. Eden Taylor. Jack Lynch. Liam Lynch. Aaron John Foy. Mirren Mackenzie. Derry Tallis. Elaine Thompson. Luke Boner. Edward David Kowinska. Vary McPartlin. Baby Wilson. Michael Walsh. Jessica Walsh. Tilly Walsh. Tara Marie Madden. Scott Ducey. Adam Sybulski. James David Roberts. Ava Murray. Ailey Rachel Costello. Jessica Karen Houston. Fraser Moyer. Theo Isaac Wallace. Skyla Ann O'Donnell. Christopher Daly. Quinn Angel Cardu.
on the days when we remember our little ones, our hearts will always remember them. When we think of the ways in which we miss them, we grieve for them, we look forward one day to seeing them again. Let us always remember that our hearts will always remember them. For this moment, remember also you are not alone.